And I can openly talk about the fact that I developed a friendship with someone when I was going through things with my spouse and I ended up having an affair. So, you know, um, and I was young, you know, not trying to say that it was the right thing to do or justify it or whatever, but that's why it is important to be friends with your spouse, to be able to talk about what inspired me to write the book basically was my journey. Um, Just going through different things in life Um, in relationships and my last relationship was um, unique in its own way and um, I married someone who I was friends with um, in the past it was kind of like familiar showed up and it was comfortable (laughs) and um, through that relationship though I learned a lot of things about myself um how to cope with my own pain while trying to help someone through their pain um putting myself first was one of the lessons that i learned after the relationship but during the process um if there were a lot of dark moments where i felt alone And I wanted to share my story with other people that could relate to something in my story to feel that you're not alone and that there are, you know, other people that are going through similar situations and that there is another side to the pain. Just getting through the process, knowing that, you know, it won't always be that way. And you have a choice to make, to choose you or to just suffer in silence. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So do you think oh, a lot of marriages suffer in silence? Definitely. I mean, growing up, one thing that, you know, I was taught is, you know, you don't share your business outside. And of course, in a marriage, you know, a marriage is sacred. You don't want to have outside voices in your marriage. But one thing that I do mention in my book is when you're in a situation like that where you need to talk to someone, that's where you need to find someone that is a non-biased person that you can talk to to get through the situation that you're in. And, you know, for me, it was therapy. Um, I wish that I was able to do therapy with my partner when we were together but it was you know it just didn't happen however when i decided to take to do therapy for myself it helped me to develop and become a better person for me a better version of myself yeah Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's interesting so do you think it's important to be best friends with your spouse I do because I mean you do need to be with someone that you can talk to that you can feel vulnerable with um friendship is very important if you can't if if I can't be vulnerable with you then who am I going to be vulnerable with you know so you do need to have a friendship and be able to share and encourage and motivate each other um I know there you know there has to be balance there, there has to be balance. But yes, I do believe you should. That should be your best friend. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because, and, and you've known me for years. You know me yes. uh, before I rebranded, right? And, <laughs> and, and going through a divorce, I can say, I can publicly say that one of our issues was we weren't yeah. best friends. Yeah, that, you know, that, mm-hmm. yeah, that, 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 ugh. Okay, I'll say this. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm just saying I'll say this talk. because communication is like number one in a relationship. And if we're not friends, then I need to talk to you, but I can't. So now we're bringing outside people in. I was married once before. And that, you know, is a very, um, it's a very dangerous place to be in when I, when you can't talk to your spouse, because now I'm developing a relationship with someone else on the outside and I can't tell you 
being my spouse that I have this relationship, especially if it's of the opposite sex. And, you know, and, and seriously, and, and I can openly talk about the fact that I developed a friendship with someone when I was going through things with my spouse and I ended up having an affair. So, you know, um, and I was young, you know, not trying to say that it was the right thing to do or justify it or whatever, but that's why it is important to be friends with your spouse, to be able to talk about those things that are hard to talk about, even if it hurts, you still should be able to talk. Mm -hmm. So friendship is important. Mm -hmm. Cause yeah, it is, right? Because there's there was a couple that my wife and I was talking to and we literally spent two, almost three hours talking to them. And her boyfriend was not willing to budge on anything. And I'm thinking, how could you be best friends with someone who right. only, they aren't even willing to compromise? Yes. Compromise. <laughs> that is a big one. Yeah. Um, I, you know, I, I went mm -hmm. through that too. Um, because you know, it's like, mm -hmm. if I, if you could just, we can agree to disagree, right? Um, I may not agree right. with what you say, but let me at least listen and hear your view. Okay. I don't agree with that, but you know, this is how I feel and why you should be able to have those conversations. Mm -hmm. And that I wasn't able to do that with my second spouse either. He would just completely shut down. So, um, yeah, not being a friend, that that's a dangerous place to be in. I recommend anyone that's dating, you know, that that's number one. If you can't communicate while you're dating, it's not going to get better when you get married. Yeah. Ooh, that's a bar. <laughs> <laughs> that's real, because that was one thing that I loved about my wife when I remarried, because this is my second marriage. And <clears throat> we we had this friendship and there was some tough conversations that we needed to have and like you said it's just because we might not see eye to eye doesn't mean that like i'm not gonna exactly. respect your opinion she had a whole life before she met me exactly. mm -hmm. you know and if you marry someone who's insensitive or they take things personal how can Absolutely. you share anything with them? and then trying to combine two different people to become one and expect it to flow, <laughs> you're gonna run into a lot of situations that may not be very easy to deal with. Yeah. And then now we're both not speaking, just dealing with it. So, you know, I call it a situationship. <laughs> you know, yeah. like it, it went from yeah. marriage to now we're just in this situation ship trying to you know, um, adapt and deal with each other. So we were like two ships passing in the night. You know, we lived in the same house. You know, we saw each other, but we rarely dealt with one another. And that, whew, that is a very stressful situation to be in because how do you say, I love you? And we were like fresh in the marriage, not even two years in, you know? When you're supposed to be honeymooning and still kind of, you know, got the butterflies in your stomach and I can't even talk to you. Now you're more like a roommate. Yeah. Yeah. Mm, yeah. And and it's it's more common than we think. And I think I think sometimes we get uh, ahead of ourselves to you know see if that person is mm. friendship material, like really share things with you. And you can respect my opinion, as we talked about, and then be able to act accordingly. Like, this is a, a pain point for me. This is an area I struggle with. And even though you might think that this person's supposed to be perfect, because we always want somebody to be, uh, we want people to be the way we want them to be, opposed to them being their own individual. That brings me to my next point. So, like, for instance, yeah. in my situation, we were friends. I dated this guy in high school. So then 20 years later, we're dating. My expectation for you is the boyfriend I had at 16. And now we're, you know, older. <laughs> and, you know, and then your expectation is that girl that you dated back then. 
you know, but now life has happened. We've matured and things have changed. So my expectation for you 20 years ago cannot be the same expectation now because that's 20 years of life that have taken place. And I don't know what situations you've been in, what your triggers are, what, you know, what, um, how, if I do certain things, how it's going to affect you. So that, that was a huge impact too. I mean, you have to have those tough conversations before you get married. But because I was comfortable with the fact that he was my, you know, we had a past, a history. I thought that, okay, this is going to be our second chance. It's going to be, you know, because I know you mm -hmm. and you know me, it's all good. We don't have to have all those conversations because I know you. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, <laughs> that's not how it went. <laughs> Oh, yeah, no, I, mm -hmm. yeah, I, and I can see where you're coming from. There was a quote that I read that said, "Marriage, marriage isn't about how compatible you are, but it's how you deal with incompatibility." Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. You know what I'm saying? It's those little, yeah, it's those little idiosyncrasies. Like, can you deal with this exactly. or that? Because we all got exactly. different little issues. You know, I, you know, and I say now, like, it's kind of no one is perfect. So, what are my deal breakers? You know, can I deal with the fact that you don't like? chocolate i don't know you know can i deal with the fact that you don't like the way i cook my meatloaf you know can, things like that you know um and what can you deal with with me see a lot of times you want to put it on the other person but not even deal with ourselves like no i'm good i know you love me you know <laughs> but yeah. yeah you have to take a, the moment and look at yourself and and find out like what is it that i can do for you and what can you do for me? And those things that I can't, are you okay with that? Yeah. Right, right. Because exactly. in our heads, we perfect, right? <laughs> we like, who wouldn't want to be with me? Exactly. <laughs> We're like, I didn't. Mm -hmm. You know, and let, let, let them tell it because there's there's a three sides to a story. Sure, that's you know, it. Your side, that their side, and the truth. That is it. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Yeah. Expectations are huge in any. Yeah. So let let me ask you this. This is uh, your second time around, right? Second time married, right? Would you Would you do Would you do this again? Knowing you know, that you know what you what they say what you know now? is a charm. <laughs> <laughs> no, but um, honestly, I would. I think for me, I can personally say, I want to date because my first marriage i was 19. so it was it was you know i'm young uh -huh. it's the right thing to do get married right the second time around i felt like time is running out you know and this is somebody that i know mm. and you know i might not get this chance again why not i have nothing to lose but now my mindset is totally different i know what i want I know what my deal breakers are. I know what what red flags to look for. I know, you know, kind of what questions to ask. And I'm not in a rush. I can take my time to really get to know that person. I want to know the ins and outs. On top of the fact that we dated long distance, but it was different. You know, I know long distance relationships can work, but also it's a matter of how much that person is willing to share with you because that, that representative that you get on those weekend getaways and then what you tell me on the phone and then you know i mean when i tell you this was like just representation <laughs> well, yes, always you got know, the macy I mean, sales but, person and, and it and good too good good at it you know yeah. Paid the bills on time. <laughs> yes. Oh, you were talking about this. You were talking about this. I was making that down payment. I'm talking to you. So, you know, once you're in there, it's like, oh, you see that? Oh, you see that? Perfect. Wow. So how can you spot the red flag then? Because a lot of people, they put on their they, they salesperson. Or they put the mask on. How can you know the red flags and like 
how long does that take? Because a lot of people say they get bamboozled during the dating process. They like, one way we're dating, and now we're together. Like, how can you? Because if Natalie want to get married again, how is Natalie going to be able to? Well, I would say this. Nine times out of ten, we saw them. We just overlooked them. Because there were a lot. say one thing that helped my mm -hmm. wife and I because we we got married in six months and we it dated long distance but it's just a matter of again yeah. you know how much you are willing to share with that person asking those right questions because I didn't ask a lot of questions and he didn't even want to know I would offer information and he's like you good because he was again basing it off of what he knew 20 years ago that was a red flag in itself you don't want to know what I'm telling you like I have this going on I have this going on and this could be an issue once we're married I'm telling you this up front but you don't want to discuss this because you think oh we're, we're in love mm -hmm. we're going to get married and it's going to be okay everything is just going to mesh together and be perfect no it's not mm -hmm. so you know I think too um, we just weren't um we were not walking together in agreement with what I believed as far as communication. And for me to find out a lot of things that I should have known up front at the end was a horrible thing that I don't wish on anybody. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and that's why, uh, shameless plug, that's why I created the five part video series dating intentionally five ways to know because you have to ask these certain questions i believe that a lot of questions can really help you see the red flags in the end like you said exactly not to ignore them or we think so mm -hmm. a lot of times we think we're the exception opposed to the rule right we think like this can't happen to me or maybe or, they'll change maybe know, i can I'm, influence I'm, them to change i can rub off on them a little bit if i stick around long enough you know i can get them out of that habit or you you cannot change anyone yeah yeah right we think we can change people and, and i realized that too that going through my divorce because even with in my first time around i tried to change my ex-wife tried to yeah. change her into who i wanted her to be this time around, I realized that you can't change yes. people, but you can influence them. And if you allow them to be, if you allow them to be who they are, eventually mm -hmm. the, the wheels will start to turn, to get turn once you, if you allow them to be who they are, because now they can actually be who mm -hmm. they mm -hmm. truly want to, who, who they are. And even if you can help them exactly. become who they mm -hmm. want to be. Yeah, being the best, and that's another thing, becoming the best version of yourself and setting that example. I guess more of setting an example instead of an expectation. I don't expect you to be yes. this person, but this is who I am, and this is what I would like. And you just come along the way, you know, as you see fit. So, you know, like for one thing, um, I'm not a fitness guru, but health is important to me. So I believe, yes, you need to get at least 30 minutes of exercise at least three times a week. At least three times a week. You know, I'm like, walk around the block, do something. 
So that's like, yeah, I, I have to be with someone like that. I cannot, you know, someone who's like, oh, I don't need that. So now you're, you're telling me that if you get sick, now I am obligated to take care of you because all you had to do was just do a little physical activity and the doctors told you that too. Yeah, stuff like that. <laughs> yeah. And, and that's and now you're talking <laughs> grown folks talk now because because there was I, I read a quote that said if you don't take care of yourself now yeah. that's saying I need you to take care of me exactly. later exactly and that's exactly selfish yeah yeah you know what I'm saying you chose exercise yeah. but now I got yeah and I'm not saying you know you don't have to be in know. the gym every day you don't have to you know but if I say okay you know honey let's go for a walk and the time permits, why can't we just go for a walk? You know, because that's important yeah. to me. Yeah. And then that goes back to the whole compromise thing. You know, I don't expect you to eat salad every meal and, you know, become vegetarian, you know, because I don't eat meat and if I'm going to tell you, you can't eat meat. No, you be you, but, you know, mm -hmm. meet me halfway. Let's, let's throw in a little green in there, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, right. right yeah. Mid I believe marriage, this is just my opinion. Marriage, I believe, is your last best chance to grow up. And the reason I say that is because you, because you can date somebody, you can be with someone for years and still not marry. But when you marry, it's, it's something yes. different about marriage. Because it, it, it gives you this, um, it's like, I'm, I'm truly committed now. It's just like any other kind of like documentation when you buy in a house, you put in your name mm -hmm. on this house saying that I'm going to pay this. You get married, people will be like, oh, I don't need papers and all this other stuff. And I'm like, no, it's Absolutely. a different ball game Absolutely. when you get married. And, you know, at the end of the day, you know, <clears throat> I'm with you and you're with me. And if something happens to me, you're committed to me to make sure that I'm okay. If we have, if I, I had children coming into the marriage are they going to be okay and that's another thing that uh, another point i wanted to bring to that i wish i had asked myself mm. this question if something mm. happens to me if you're a single i'm going to say this if you're mm. a single parent and you're planning on mm. or if you want to know if this person is for you ask yourself the question if something happens to me that I cannot take care of my children, do I tr trust this person to do it and to make sure they're okay? Mm -hmm. If you can answer that question sincerely, yes, then I say take your time, get mm -hmm. to know that person by all means. But if there is even a little bit of, mm, I don't know, then you need to think that thing through. If I had asked myself that question, mm. I think that would have eliminated a whole lot of the things that I went through. And we could have just been friends and stayed friends. Wow. It's true. Oh, that's heavy. You know, being a single mom, I mean, yeah. I was single for yeah. 11 years after my first marriage. And then now, you know, my children are at mm. an age, you know, I had a teenager well, and then a college student. So they were at the age of, mm -hmm. you know, like independence, but at the same time, they still needed a parent. So um, could I trust that person to make sure that they were okay? Or would I have to depend mm -hmm. on another family member stepping in? Yeah. Wow. wow. That's deep. Great question. Because <clears throat> even with my ex-wife, which is funny, I don't know if I told you this story, but uh, me and, and her son, like, cause I raised him. And, and there, you know, we went through the divorce or whatever, there's years that we didn't speak. One day he asked my, uh, his sister, you know, for my number. He calls me and he's like, hey, Sean, I just want to say I'm sorry for, you know, the way things happened between us and stuff like that. He's like, I just want us to still be cool because it's like you raised me in spite of what went on between you and my mom it's like i just want to apologize and brought me to tears because i was like wow because i just kind of crossed it off right. like well okay well it's over you know what i'm saying i ain't got 
whatever. But it's like, you taught me so much, you know, like, I just want to make sure that we're good and we can still have a relationship. And even to this day, me and him, we still text each other. We still catch up because now he's married with a family. And and now he see all the stuff that I taught him growing up. He's like, oh, it all makes sense And that's sense awesome now. that, you know, he did take the time to show you that appreciation and gratitude. That means a lot. Because some people don't get that. Yeah. Nope. Nope. Uh, I um, I think it's Celeste. She says, a woman, man, that, that really loves their spouse will get in shape for them. And that's all the way across the board, mentally, physically, and emotionally. I love that comment because if they truly love you, they will that. make the necessary <laughs> changes. <laughs> that is true. Yeah. 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 If, if, if they love, because there's, there's not mm -hmm. one thing I would not do for this. I need. That woman is phenomenal. I, there's no, that, yeah, there's nothing Love I want to do. Love you do some things. It <laughs> <laughs> will. Yeah, right? Yeah, right? So, but, but I get it. Uh, this has been great, Natalie. I so much more. We have to do a part two of this because I got other interviews coming today. Uh, I got to probably do another Instagram live today. We got some time to jump on that today but tell us uh where can we get the book because it's yes. a journal after, also if i'm correct yes. this, and this after, after actually after each chapter there's also some journaling that you can reflect from that chapter so and then at the end there is a 30-day um, reflection journal because i talk about the different types of smiles and you know why we can't, why why do we show those smiles and what went through during my journey when I was doing that smile? Like, for instance, the mask smile, which most of us are familiar with. It's fake. We do it because we feel like we have to, you know, show everybody else that we're okay, even though we're not. But then towards the end, I also talk about the faith smile, where it's a smile of hope and I'm believing things to be better. So the book can be um, purchased on mm -hmm. Amazon. Um, my um, link is on my Instagram, um, PHX Butterfly. Um, but yeah, you can purchase it on Amazon. Mm -hmm. Okay, for sure. Yeah, everyone that's in the room, make sure you purchase Natalie's book, Smile On Purpose. Uh, Dr. Onset said we'll be doing more on dating after divorce. Of course, that's what I do with the Brave Hearts community. That's that's the whole rebranding is what does love look like after divorce, getting right back out here in this field again and doing it again. Because when I went through a divorce, I was married yeah. for 15 years, Natalie. <clears throat> and and getting back Change. out here in these dating streets, I'm like Instagram, Snapchat, Inst uh, uh, YouTube, all these different platforms, right. and then a, I didn't even jump on any dating apps. <laughs> did you? Did you, you would, know, would you be open I've to try getting on dating set up profiles? And, and then I can, as soon as I start getting like um, messages, I freeze up. <laughs> it's weird. It's, you know, I, I have to embrace mm. it, you know, but mm, it's just so much out there, you know, new day, new time. <laughs> <laughs> she says these dating streets Quite are shady. Quite right. It's just too you, much. You, <laughs> you, you know what, Natalie? And again, I, this is just my opinion. I'm going to put this out there for everybody that's in here today because this is being recorded. I'll, I'll put this up for consumption but if i can get remarried at 40 to the baddest chick in the game what's your excuse there's good people out here i believe that there's good people out here and then because uh, i uh, i don't want to talk about this because it's in my video of course but i will say that there are good people and i, I posted a tweet the other day that said uh, you pee in a dating pool when you become who hurt you. <laughs> okay, I'll do, I'll let that sit for a minute. But 
don't become who hurt you. And that's why I ask you, Natalie, are you open to remarrying again? Because it seems as if you have your peace yeah. back. It seems like you are smiling on purpose. And I'm glad that you Not haven't bitter, turned into better, 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 better. And that's what it's all about, becoming yeah. better, a better version of yourself so that you don't become bitter. Because it's easy to do. If you get in that self-pity party and... No, it's all about being better for you. Regardless, if you want to date, if you want to stay single, you need to be better for yourself. Finding that peace and that pain. I just took that pain, pushed it to purpose, and here we are. <laughs> That's what's up. Yeah, because, you know, you, you don't look like what you've been through. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and I, I will say that I'm glad that you didn't take that bitter route because on social media, it's easy to make a lot of money yeah. being bitter Betty and bitter Bob. You know, you can make a lot that of money because so there's a lot of that unhappy so people out here. You know, I got a lot of flack because they're like, you're so happy and so positive. Nobody wants to hear about optimism. And I'm thinking somebody does. Maybe not you, but someone does. We have enough negativity in the world. Somebody needs to be, you know, positive. <laughs> somebody yeah. right because red pill and blue pill guys community I'm, and all that stuff those guys are making okay. the killing <laughs> that's just not me yeah <laughs> I don't... Right. right i can sleep at night i'm good <laughs> oh um ruth green says separated last april uh divorce finalized this april i'm 48 but not in a rush to date. Uh, it'll happen. Amen to that. Dr. Arm says, says, I've been divorced for 12 years, finally healed, but want to do it on God's time. I love that. That's perfect. Yeah, just let, uh, and maybe all of y'all should connect. Mm -hmm. Seem like we all, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Seem like I mean, it took 11 years for me to even get married a second time, you know, because I needed to have some time with myself. I was focused with being a parent, but even now you need that time for yourself. Find out what you like, what you don't like, you know, and just fall in love with you. <laughs> yeah, right, because when I was going through my, my separation and divorce, exactly. like I was going to the movies by myself. I, I was hanging out right. with Sean Hyman. I was like, you know, so all you doing is just adding to my happy. <laughs> They said the I, I I listened to a podcast the other day. They said if you the key to a happy that, marriage is to marry someone who's already happy. Yeah, you can't make someone happy. <laughs> they have to already be there. So my happy and your happy just gonna connect. We just gonna be happier. <laughs> <laughs> I know that's right, Natalie. Thank you, thank you so me. much once again. Thank you for one. Yes, in the chat, we had some technical difficulties, but we still going to make it happen. We still That's pull right. it off. So take that devil. <laughs> <laughs> so you all make sure you pick up Natalie's book. Um, I appreciate your support Thank throughout you. the years, Natalie. Uh, we have such beautiful backstory together. She's one of my favorite people in the world. Um, and for us to still be connected and still doing what we do is, 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 is. a blessing within itself. Yeah, so thank you. Thank you, Natalie, once again. Does anyone have any questions real quick before we jump off? Uh, Dr. Arnsa says, I think time is important because you have to be secure or you'll repeat it again. Mm -hmm. That's a blessing. That's that's real talk. Real talk. Glad I turn, uh, turned in. Yeah. Thank you, Dr. Arnsa. And she's been around. She's been connected to me for years, too. Natalie, I don't know if you know her. You maybe know her. I don't know. But if I'm not, yeah, make sure, sure y'all connect because I've okay. been knowing Dr. Armstead. For like back when you was on the radio? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like Okay. Like oh, okay. Then, the yeah. we, we probably crossed paths somewhere on social media. <laughs> yeah. But you all should connect. But thanks again, everybody, for uh, tuning in. I'm about to jump off. I got another interview. So if y'all want to jump in, I will be back within another hour and a half or something like that. Um, Natalie, uh, I will tag you on social media. We'll get this out there for those who might have missed because they need to hear your story and they need to pick up your book. Thanks again. Y'all take care.